This is going to be a quick video where we attempt to define the word linear in the phrase linear models. Let's just jump immediately to a definition, even if it's not the most clear at first, we'll try to explain it as we go. Linear means linear in the coefficients beta. Now I'm thinking here as a vector of coefficients beta, so there's multiple betas. Often it's written out, as you see it here, the intercept beta naught plus the sum of all of your different coefficients times some explanatory variables as they'd show up inside a model matrix. Now what's linear, I'm just going to say it again, is that sum is linear around the coefficients themselves. You should think of that as the x and j's, that is the nth observation for your jth explanatory variable, can basically be whatever values you want. Certainly some bad choices exist, but there's some reasonable choices, like maybe you want uh, x and j really to be the log of some numerical explanatory variable, or maybe you want your x and j to be the square of some other numeric explanatory variable. Those are certainly reasonable options that exist. Now, I don't want you to get too carried away with the squared idea, because it's really easy to think, OK, well, if I could square these terms, then I could cube these terms, or I could take the fourth power of these terms. And polynomials are generally a bad idea, but that's kind of out of the scope of this video, because you get into some pretty deep linear algebra beyond squared terms. So let's just jump into R and do a quick example of what a single squared, but no higher, term looks like in a simple example. So here we go. Um, I'm going to set up uh, the library ggplot2. I'm going to use as my example the cars data set from my GitHub repository, where I'm going to basically extend a linear model going through, let's see, weight as the explanatory variable and miles per gallon in the city as the response variable. I'm going to try to identify this curve through the data a little bit better than the linear model does. And it actually turns out to be really easy using R's function lm. You can explain the response variable using the explanatory variable weight plus, because it's linear in the coefficients, and then here's some fancy notation that basically just says square the weight term. So you can create a quadratic fit with a linear model. And in no way does R complain about anything we just did. This fits within the framework of linear because this plus is separating out the coefficients beta linearly. And in fact, ggplot totally allows you to do this just the same as long as you use their extra notation poly, standing for polynomial, of degree 2. But remember, polynomials can be dangerous beyond 2. And we can make the plot that represents the model we just fit in R using LM. And you can see this quadratic model fits the data much better than a linear model. The only thing I'm really going to worry, uh, uh, worry about with this quadratic model through the data is extrapolation becomes even more dangerous here. Now remember, the function does not end right here, even though the data do. So if you were to predict at, say, 6,000, this function would curve back up, because that's what quadratic functions do. And it would tell you, beyond some minimum value, heavier cars actually get better gas mileage, making extrapolation from this quadratic fit through these data really bad. However, within the range of the data, this quadratic fit does much better, better than a linear uh, line through the data. So it turns out um, the word linear here is actually much more general than most people give credit. Linear models are actually quite flexible in their 
uh, ability to fit the world around us. And this is kind of why they're like the mainstay of the world of statistics as a first model. Although it sounds simplistic, linear models are quite general.